Hey YouTube, this is Garage1990, and today I wanted to do a different style of video. Um, basically wanted to do a little discussion video about the cards in the Sorcery TCG that I am playing the most, and I kind of wanted to go into the reasonings as to why. There's, there's multiple reasons. There's flavor, uh, artwork for one of them, um, overall playability, the crazy thematic scenes that these cards can create. And I kind of want to, if people are already playing them, I kind of want to encourage them to try them out. Though I, I can pretty much say with confidence that most people playing Sorcery are probably playing every card that's in this list. And I picked one card from every card type. So there's an Avatar, obviously, as you can see by Pathfinder. There is a Sight, and then an Artifact, or like a colorless card, and then at least one card from each attribute. I have another stack of cards from my decks, actually, that are some, like, honorable mentions for each attribute. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over each one of them, and I'm going to lay them all out, and then I'll explain as to why I am playing them. So first, we have Pathfinder for the Avatar. I have Crossroads for the Sight. I'll put that sideways. I have Magellan Globe for the Relic or Artifact. Uh, Pudge Butcher for Earth. Grapple Shot for Air, Giant Shark for Water, and then finally Vile Imp for Fire. So I'll actually go backwards through this list as I'm knocking them all over after I made them all pretty. <clears throat> so, Vile Imp. Basically, any deck I run that runs Fire as an attribute, I am running four of this card in every single build. In fact, it is the first Fire card I put into my decks. With an exception of a certain unique, which I don't believe uniques in this game make or break decks, but I will say Death Dealer is something insane, and if you're going to splurge money on a unique and you're running fire, I would almost certainly say pick up a Death Dealer because the card is just that good, plus the artwork is just so sweet. But anyway, Violent, like why is this card good? Why do I play it? It's a cheap two-cost minion. It's an ordinary, so you can, you know, run four of them. Uh, two power for two costs isn't, like, a bad exchange rate. And its Genesis ability is it does two damage to target adjacent unit. So, unit's really good. It, I When I was playing this card at first, I thought it was just minions. But no, you can damage avatars with this card. Um, being able, like, treat this like another burn spell for the opponent's avatar. And if they're on death's door... This is dealing damage. Like, this can kill them on Death Store. It deals, like, the Death Blow. And, uh, yeah, Vile Imp, it just, it's just everything. It's everything that you get. It's just really good value for what this card does. Um, I do love the new artwork, too, though the Frank Rosetta artwork is something I also really enjoy. But those are in a collection binder, so I don't screw them up because I do have a play set of those. But uh, I also like how, like, just, like, almost childish looking this thing is but uh this card is quite annoying <laughs> it's, it is very annoying especially in a deck where you can like play them sack them out to something and then bring them back with their genesis ability off of you know like death like a good old uh death speaker here and you just pump out so much damage on top of being able to either like chump block for something or attack something for two vile imp is just in my personal opinion all around a great minion and now for water, I, I'm actually going to say Giant Shark. There were a couple of other cards that I had in mind. Um, after playtesting Giant Shark a bunch with all these crazy shenanigans, especially with Pudge Butcher. Uh, this card is insane with Pudge Butcher, by the way. But uh, yeah, Giant Shark is just a, a great guard dog. It's like the best way to put it. Be careful, though, because this thing will just straight eat your own stuff. But uh, Submerge and Waterbound... It's whatever. It's the fact that it's an exceptional card with five power, so you don't have to rely on your heavy hitters to be elites or uniques where you don't see them as much. Like, you'll have a better chance of seeing this card throughout a game. And it's just the ability to be able to move for free and gain a free attack is so good in this game. It's another reason why I like Pudge Butcher and uh, Grapple Shot so much, too. There's, like, an ongoing theme. Well, not with this, but, like, these two and, like, this. It's getting to do things for what I would call free, not having to really spend actions for them. <clears throat> and a little cool interaction with Pudge Butcher, let's say uh, you have your shark here, Pudge Butcher here. This is all like water, right? You got your little violent dude. Let's say he's like over here. 
You go to use Pudge Butcher, grapples this dude, he moves here. He technically enters a water site. Your giant shark is going to swim over here and he's going to eat it. Let's say for whatever reason, like this thing doesn't die or actually better example would be an avatar. Better example is an avatar. Then avatar is going to enter this site and the giant shark is going to follow it and fight it again. Pathfinder will then move here. Giant shark will then trigger again, move there and fight it. And then pudge butcher will fight it. So like these two together are a deadly, deadly combo, especially when they're all in like the same body of water. I have a deck with these and it is quite annoying. I will say that combo isn't something I came up with um, in the team coming to Discord. There was a, a big, big discussion about both of these and also Chaos Twister and doing a Sharknado style deck, which I thought was hilarious. I'm going to have to do that eventually and I'll, I'll have a deck tech for that at, at some point. But a giant shark is just insane with the crazy things that you can do with this card, like with that scenario especially when you have a bunch of sharks together and then they start triggering off themselves while they're moving, it just becomes pure chaos, which is a, a, like the main reason why I'm picking Giant Shark. Plus, is this a good five power beat stick? Like this is one of the stronger uh, water cards in my opinion. Next is, uh, it's Grapple Shot. Um, yeah, this is my all time number one most played card. And when I make decks, I actually run air just to play grapple shot like this card in my opinion is probably a little too good um being ordinary is great you know you can run four of them three costs only one threshold the thing that i find so busted about this card is that the unit doing it doesn't tap to do it so like my whole point behind that is uh heck you can even grapple shot a pudge butcher but you do grapple shot right, the thing gets free movement, and then it gets a free strike. And then it can tap to do whatever it's doing after that. Like, this card enables so much, like, so, so much. For an ordinary card that you can run a bunch of, so the chances of you seeing this in the game multiple times are pretty high. And it's just the, the free movement you can get from moving across the realm, the free strike, being able to tap to do something afterwards. Like, the fact that this doesn't tap whatever's doing it kind of blows my mind really um yeah grapple shots nuts like this this card is utterly insane and ever since uh someone posted that ghostbusters thing where this monster that's all i see now is like ghostbusters like i almost want to like alternate art paint this dude to be one of the ghostbuster dudes which is a uh, i'm pretty sure someone's gonna do that along the line but yeah like grapple shot is insane like I, I do play, like, decks that literally run just this as the only air card. And, I mean, you could also run, like, Lightning Bolt, too. But Grapple Shot is just so, so good. And it's, again, it's my number one most played card out of anything in Sorcery. Next is Pudge Butcher for Earth. Um, yeah, my style of art is this. Pretty much this. Along with the old uh, Death Dealer artwork very like necrotic and creepy and demonic and like just straight up gross and foul yeah this right here this was my number one favorite card in this game like as far as artwork goes until that i saw the new death dealer that obviously took first place but um, i also love the promo version of pudge butcher where you see like his little butt <laughs> he's like flipped around backwards i can't wait to get a copy of though like one of those copies and then oh my goodness that's gonna be uh so much fun but, uh, yeah, Pudge Butcher is also just an insane card, too. It's the amount of power this thing offers for its cost is very, very good. Being an exceptional, you can have three of them. That's fantastic. It being in mobile, you don't care about that. Like, yeah, positioning is a thing, but this thing just drags everything to it. And paired with air, you can, like, teleport him everywhere. You can blink him. You can grapple shot him, like... It's it's insane, and four costs for five power is no joke, especially if you're lucky enough to hit the opposing player's avatar with this card and drag him into your territory, and then this dog pile on top of him after that. Yeah, it's it's pretty gross. Um, this card is as gross as its artwork is, and it should definitely not be you know looked over and not really thought of much when it's in play. Once once this is in play, I pretty much do everything I can to get rid of it if my opponent's playing it. And I do whatever I can to protect it or to position it better when I am playing one. 
yeah, Pudge Butcher is great. I've had a lot of really good memories with uh, Pudge Butcher so far in this game, especially if you have a Pudge Butcher and the bottomless pit in front of you, in front of it, and an opposing minion, and you basically grapple shot the minion, and it drags into the pit, and then it just dies <laughs> before you even get a chance to fight. It'll just like auto kill stuff with the uh, bottomless pit. It's it's pretty hilarious. Now for the relics, I am choosing Magellan Globe, and this is a newer card that I've gained an appreciation for. Also, the foil is just gorgeous on this card, too. Um, yeah, Magellan Globe is great. For two cost, it doesn't matter where it is, it just makes the realm connected in every sense of the way. Especially with Pathfinder, and I have checked with this online, I've asked in the Discord. Let's say this is the edge of the realm here, because I, I can't show the rest of it. You go to activate Pathfinder, you go to put a, a site here, which would technically be over here. The site would go over here, and then Pathfinder would move to that site. Like, this makes the world so much smaller and more accessible for Pathfinder. It's that alone. Like, I, I've updated my Pathfinder deck list since my last uh, deck tech video for this card alone. It's so much fun playing Pathfinder when you have a Magellan Globe in play, because Pathfinder is just frolicking all over the place and he's so hard to pin down and every game i play where i have a magellan globe in play the entire realm gets filled with locations and that just creates such a more rich and fulfilling game and it creates a lot more stories too when you're playing it and having access to do that especially with magellan globe is notable and that is why it is my favorite relic for the game and certainly one of my most played relics now for the sites, if you've seen my videos in the past, you're probably not too surprised about this one. Uh, yeah, it's Crossroads. Uh, put this card in every single deck. Like, put two of them in every single deck. I, I'm probably going to order, like, 10 to 12 more of these so I have enough to put in my decks. Like, I have eight of them now, and it's not enough. This card's great. Uh, there's not a lot of ways to fix what you're drawing off of your Atlas deck. Yeah, this is it. This right here is it. This is like the closest we have to like a fetch land for uh, magic players out there. It's it's more ways to just control the randomness of the Atlas deck. It's, you know, it doesn't provide a threshold, whatever. But it can go into every deck. Like, there's no reason not to play this card. Even like in Pathfinder, it's one of my favorite ones in Pathfinder. In fact, this is out of my uh, Pathfinder deck. It makes Pathfinder less random and a little more predictable where you want to move your Pathfinder. Plus, the artwork is great. I love how, like, rough and kind of, like, dirty feeling it is. It's very, like, kind of grimy, but still somewhat peaceful and, like, ominous at the same time. Yeah, love the art on this card. Uh, this artist in particular, I don't want to butcher your name. I'm sorry, but all of your cards are just gorgeous in this game. Yeah, Crossroads. I say it in every deck tech. I have it. Yeah, you play this card. It's one of the most played cards in sorcery that I have, just in general. And then to round things off for the Avatars... It used to be Death Speaker was my favorite. The more and more I play, the more and more I am falling in love with this avatar. Uh, yeah, just it, it fits its theme so well. You really are just creating the realm with your avatar, journeying across the world, and just it, I, I seriously can't explain it enough. Um, being able to play a site and get a free move off of it it, it it's obviously its strength you can corner yourself and you have to be a little cautious about where you're putting yourself but that advantage on top of never having to waste time drawing sites with you know like with your card drop return you're always drawing from your spell book with this deck and so over the course of a game you're going to naturally either have more resources or you're going to have bigger uh like a bigger hand like a bigger card advantage pool over your opponent and that's where the real advantage to pathfinder lies I find it kind of lame that it was like a unique rarity. I wish it was as common as the other ones, personally, because of just how powerful I think this card is. It's also incredibly fun and very thematic, and it looks great in uh, these sleeves, these like dark green sleeves I have. <laughs> Not that that really matters, I suppose. But yeah, Pathfinder is, it's it's the avatar I'm having the most fun playing. Um I'd say an honorable second mention is slowly becoming Battle Mage. And I was fortunate enough to get a foil, which is really pretty. The artwork on the back is great, too. He's got, like, this blue, like, flaming sword down here. I mean, just look at that. Yeah, Battle Mage is great, too. But uh, those games can be pretty swingy with Battle Mage, especially with the way I have my deck built now, which has also changed. It's fully non-minion based now. But that, that'll be another video for another time. 
yeah, this card, fantastic. If you happen to get one, you know, awesome. Uh, build a deck. You know, I have this, like, land-stealing deck with it. And if you're looking, again, to purchase uniques, if you're on, like, a budget, I would say Splurge for Pathfinder. You won't regret it. Uh, this avatar is a lot of fun to play. And now for the last bit of the video, I won't go into detail about these cards too much. And yes, these are all taken out of the decks I currently have. These are all of my like honorable mentions, I should say, or just all around very good, powerful cards. So for more relics, uh, Flaming Sword is a very good one. It gives a splash power and plus one power to whatever it is you have. So like if a giant shark taps to strike, it'll strike everything instead of just one thing. It's exceptionally good with a uh, battle mage and clearing out a bunch of chump blockers. For the sites, I have a, a couple here. I really like Great Wall. Being able to roadblock your opponent is quite fantastic. And I'm starting to really like Imperial Road, especially this foil. Look at that. And it looks like a road of glass. Like, ah, it's so good. But Imperial Road is a pretty good, like, like a uh, ramp. This is kind of like our, our ramp kind of a card. You play it, your opponent gets to play a site adjacent to it, then you get to play an additional site adjacent to it. So just make sure you have room to play your sites because your opponent places first before you. Yes. So just don't kind of screw yourself out of your, your free ramp. It speeds the game up, essentially. So that is why I like both of those. Got some fire cards. Uh, again, Death Dealer, being able to Wrath of God when it comes into play. Uh, and then went off of Genesis, so Death Speaker can do this multiple times. is pretty insane. Uh, Infiltrate is an exceptional card. Four cost, uh, elite. Basically steal an opponent's minion and, until it, it, it deals damage, and you tap it, and it gains stealth. So if there's a problem minion out that you like can't kill, uh, yeah, just steal it. And just wait until your opponent's avatar is on Death's Door and just freaking send it at him. Really, really good for four cost. Disintegrate as well is an exceptional removal spell. Being able to banish a nearby minion and everything it has. Uh, yeah, I can't express how good that card is enough. For water, I have Great Old One, mainly because I love HP Lovecraft, like Lovecraftian and horror and Cthulhu stuff, and this is essentially what this is referencing to. Also, it is uh, 16 freaking power. Yeah, that's a lot. That's, I think, the most in the game. Unless there's a card I haven't seen yet, which is very possible. 16 power is a lot, and it permanently floods the entire realm. So water stuff gets insanely good off of this, especially a giant shark. This thing's going to be swimming all over the place. Card's great. Uh, Polymorph, uh, two cost, really good removal spell. When you transform something, you, I think, banish it. And just turn into a little pointless little frog. Watch out, though. Those frogs can get you, especially when they steal your land deed from your mountain giant that they somehow killed and then run amok stealing your stuff with it. It's, a, it's quite annoying. For water, or not water, for air, uh, Grandmaster Wizard and Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt is very straightforward. Just good burn card for two costs. Yeah, it's great. Uh, if you're playing air, you're playing Lightning Bolts. And if you're playing air, you're more than likely playing Grandmaster Wizard as well. I didn't think this card was that great at first when like the game first came out. I thought six was way too much for zero power. Turns out, uh, yeah, drawing three spells is a lot. Essentially, it says uh, draw a new hand because you start the game with three spells. This essentially gives you another hand. And being able to cast this multiple times off of Death Speaker, again, very, very good. And to round things off for the like honorable mentions is these three Earth cards. Earthquake is very, very solid card. Being able to reposition four sites and then potentially killing everything there. Because not a whole lot of stuff in this game has uh, Bury or Burrow. Like, there's not a whole lot of key cards that have Burrow in general. So this is more than likely going to kill everything that's there outside of, like, avatars. And then permanently, like, or, you know, bury artifacts. So if they can't get them, then you don't have to worry about those artifacts anymore. But the main thing is being able to reposition the sites that are there. Where sites are and like the abilities that they have are very key in this game. And this is one of the few cards that can reposition those to your favor later on in the game. Earthquake is great. It's probably one of the better Earth cards in the game. For now anyway. Um, it's, it's definitely in most of the decks I have that run Earth. And then lastly, we have Land Surveyor and Frontier Settlers. Go with my, uh, Land Surveyor first. Essentially, just a two cost, draw a site. 
Being able to draw a site without wasting your draw for turn to draw from your site is great. It keeps you drawing more spells, which keeps up the card advantage that you have throughout the game. And it's a board presence too. You can't, you know, mock at that because you have one power is whatever, but it can still chump block when it needs to. And then Frontier Settlers is another ramp style card. There's also these little fairies that generate free mana every turn. I wanted to include those, but I didn't want to include too many earth cards compared to everything else. So I chose Frontier Settlers. The two cost a double threshold of earth. You have to keep in mind this does need two earth threshold. One power, but it's like a mini uh, Pathfinder. In fact, I run them in my Pathfinder deck. And yeah, they basically tap, play a site, move there, and then lose the ability. So they're literally settling into new frontiers. <laughs> like, the theme and flavor of this card is so good. It, like, it hurts how good it is. And it's also just a great card, being able to ramp out, too. Because a lot of Earth cards cost a lot of mana. Like Conqueror Worm and Mountain Giant and all your endgame sort of finishers. So anyway, that is the video... These are my, again, right here, these are the ones that I am choosing as my most played and probably most important cards for each, like, attribute or card type. And these are all cards that I think everyone out there should be playing as well. Um, yeah, but let me know what are your favorite cards that you play, what cards do you think are, like, considered staples uh, down in the comments below. And if you agree or disagree with my list, um, I... I've been enjoying talking with everyone, and again, uh, welcome to all the new subscribers. I've gained like 120-some subscribers in the past like two weeks. Kind of insane. But yeah, hopefully you guys continue liking my stuff, and uh, welcome to all you new people here. Um, I try to be upbeat and as positive as possible, and I love talking with all of you. I try my best to get back to every comment, and I think I, think I have so far. So, yeah, unless I've like missed one. I'll double-check later today, though. But anyway... Let me know what uh, your guys' list would look like in the comments down below. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya.